Good morning, good morning, you guys. It's day number 81 of my stay fatical to 50. This has been a 100-day journey, seeking to transform my body, my mind, pretty much observing whatever else happens. Happy, happy Saturday to you guys. Hope you're having a great weekend so far. I have already been to the farmer's market. I loaded up on a whole bunch of meat. They'll be shutting down the farmer's market for the winter coming up here soon. So the last month, I would say, every Saturday I've gone to the market to get food for me for now, but also getting extra food for during the winter when I won't have access to my grass-fed beef and the sausage and all the other delicious foods that I like to get from my local farmer's market. If you're not already supporting local farmers and farmers markets you got to do it we got to vote with our dollars you guys if you pretend to be about real food stop buying stuff at walmart and the local grocery store and i know the argument people make is well i can't afford the farmer's market my farmer's market i don't know about yours my farmer's market they help you if you financially uh can't afford they actually take uh, what is it? The food stamps, the WIC, and they translate those into little tokens that then they can use in the market, uh, which allows them to double their value. So whatever their food stamps uh, are worth, they double it in the market. So if grass-fed beef is eight dollars a pound, they actually get it for four dollars a pound, and then of course they have the food stamps to help pay for that. So um, that's cool really like that so but hello guys thanks for being here yes day 81 we are in the home stretch of this official stay radical to 50 it's been a great journey for me i've enjoyed i think more than anything i mean obviously the the changes that have happened for me doing all these things have been great but my favorite part of this whole journey has been talking to you guys i feel like this kind of a connection with you is probably something I've been missing because I have a lot to say, like deep thoughts to share. And you guys that follow me regularly, you like that. You want to see more of that. So the good news is walk and talk will very likely continue even once the 100 days is over. And uh, I'll probably make it into a podcast of some sort. I was just debating kind of this morning in my mind, should I create a, a separate Instagram account just for the walk and talk? And I'm like, nah, I'll just keep it here. Um, but yes, content is my thing. I like to make lots of content. So we will probably keep these things going. But I wanted to talk about a topic here today, as I always do, that will get you to think. So keep an open mind. And here we go. I feel like most people go through their lives merely existing. They're just being. They're just kind of going through the motions. And that's going to step on the toes of a lot of people because as soon as I say that statement, you're like, oh crap, am I doing that? And I think a lot of people do that even unwillingly, unwittingly, Just because life is just, it's a lot. Life can some days feel that it's everything you do just to survive. And so, yeah, you are existing. You are just caught up in the matrix of it all. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that from time to time. You know, sometimes kind of getting caught up and just going through the motions. A lot of you that have kids or other family responsibilities. You get up, you make sure the kids are all set. You go to your job, you come home from work, you say hi to the family and you go to sleep and do it all over again the next day. And it feels like this rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, where you're going through the motions. Are you happy in that state? Is that something that when you were a kid, you were dreaming, oh, someday I hope I get to go through the monotony of a life that's just consumed by life. Not me. 
I grew up hoping that things would be exciting in my life, that I could experience things beyond the nine to five, beyond the simple and mundane. Unfortunately, a lot of people have basically made it their life's goal to just exist and just be because it's the right thing to do. And let me, let me defend it for a second. Just being and just existing is at least going through life. There are people who give up. They don't even be, they don't even just exist. They just drop. They just don't do anything. And then they get behind financially. They don't really progress in their life at all. And so at least if you're existing and you're just being, you're doing better than that. But I wanna make an argument for why you should strive to become. What do I mean by that? I think within us, we all have those deep desires to be more, to be better, to always want to pursue dreams of our heart, pursue things that we may have once thought were out of reach. And maybe you still feel like they're out of reach. I don't have the time. I don't have the resources. I have family obligations. I can't do those things that I know if I pursued them, I would have to work hard at. But I would like to do it. To which I ask why? What is it that holds you back? What is it that keeps you existing? Being. All of that stuff is important in the day to day, but have you thought about your future? I think people that live in the mere existence and in the mere just being, they don't think about the future. They're all about, oh, where I'm at now, very comfortable. And I don't want to shake that up. I don't want to lose this false sense of security that I have, that where I'm at now is very comfortable and I can be happy there. I think we fool ourselves into thinking that mere existing, mere being is happiness. I don't know about you, but it's not. Mere existing, going through the motions of life, that's not living to me. Living is pursuing dreams, hopes, going after things that seem impossible. Because when you do that, and even if you just get a taste of it, it, stri- it makes you strive to want to go after more and to be more and to become that person you've always wanted to be. I just feel like a lot of people leave so much on the table of their life that they sit back, they expect life to come to them. They have this expectation that, well, if, if something's going to happen... It's just going to come. Why? Why would it ever just come? You got to get off your rump. And yeah, I'm going to talk a little tough love to you right now. Get off your rump. Go do something that puts you one step closer to where you want to be. And the hard part about this topic is people are very comfortable in the existing and in the being and yet they lament at the same time that their life never goes anywhere, their life is boring, they feel like there's no point to life if this is all it is. If that's you, let me behoove you today to go make the life you want. All of the people that expect life to come to them and dazzle them, and to be all the things that they want, 
Stop. Stop assuming that is the role that life plays. If you want something badly enough, you will pursue it with all your heart. You will be aggressively going after it with all the energy. If it's that important to you, you will prioritize it and make it happen. Life just doesn't just plop in your lap. Good morning. Hey, good morning. And so that's where I want to kind of focus in on with you guys today. I definitely want to hear your pushback on this or if you agree with me. Don't just exist anymore. Don't just be. Don't just think that, well, I'll just go through life and if good things happen, great. If I find positive things that come my way, okay. Third little secret is people that are successful, people that get things in life, it's not because it randomly just came at them. Now, that's not to say there aren't random things that can happen. There are. But most of the people that find success at anything in life, it's a direct result of hard work, dedication, and a persistent pursuit of that thing that they want. Stop assuming that you can become by just being. Being does not equal become. Being is existing, and that's all you're doing is existing. Going through those motions. You have to put in the effort. You have to strive. You have to be hungry and desire that becoming. Is this resonating at all? I feel like... I feel like this is common sense, but at the same time, it's common sense that ain't that common. Far too many people aren't doing anything in this. And they're out there in life, wondering what if, and lamenting why, why are other people getting the desires of their heart? I just don't understand, I'm here why can't I have those same things? If you are a comparison person and you're seeing all these other people getting things that you want, you gotta ask yourself why. And I'm going to come back to this topic today. Don't just exist. Perhaps the existence, just being, is all you are right now. And I understand striving to become is risky. Because when you strive to become all those things you want to be, strive to become and, and go after all of those desires of your heart. And I want to hear what those are. Everybody has dreams, you guys. Tell me what your dreams are. And are you pursuing those? Are you striving for those? And if not, why not? I definitely want to hear you guys interact with this one because... I just have a passion in my heart to empower people to go after the things they want. And if you see something in life that you want and you really deeply desire it, you will do anything to make sure it happens or at least set yourself up that it can happen. Think about that perfect job in your brain. Whatever you're doing in your job now, and maybe you're working your perfect job, that's great if you are, but a lot of people don't like where they work. What's the perfect job? Now, stop and ask yourself, why aren't you doing that perfect job? You could say, well, it's scary to leave my current job or the opportunities for this other job have not come up. And so that holds you back. And in the meantime, you're just existing in the current job. Are you applying for these jobs? Are you making yourself better, improving your skill set? There's always ways to become even before you have the fruition of the become. That makes sense? I often kid with people that all the jobs I ever had, and they were menial kind of tasks, but every job I used to have in my past have now equipped me to do what I'm doing right now. 
back in the 90s, I was a disc jockey at a Christian radio station. It was just a little volunteer radio station. 88.5 FM WODC, your lighthouse in Virginia Beach. That was, that was the little tagline. And now I get to talk for a living behind the microphone and behind the camera because I learned how to talk behind the microphone on the Christian radio. I also was an English major in college. I was a double major, poli sci and English. And now I'm a writer for a living. I used to work at a big corporation where I answered all of the emails in their customer service department. Now I answer my own emails and I have an etiquette about it to respond. Everything you're doing right now while you're being is preparing you for your becoming, for what you want in your life. So while you may not be content with where you are, pay attention to everything you're doing with what you're doing right now. Because at some point, those skills that you're gaining are going to be used to live out your becoming and the dreams that you've always wanted. If I had not lived it, I would have not believed it. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool when you realize, you kind of look back on your life and go, whoa, all right, I didn't get paid anything for that radio gig I did, but dang, if I'm not using the skills, it's pretty cool. So if you're just joining in, I am on day 81 of my stay baddical to 50 on this 100 day journey to better myself, physically, mentally, pretty much whatever else happens, I'm just observing. And so I've been doing these walk and talks. On the weekends, I go a little bit later, but uh, weekdays I'm up about when the sun is up, 7.30 or eight o'clock in the morning. And I always bring up a topic to kind of make you think. And so today's topic, don't just exist, strive to become. And when you strive to become, you're going after those things in your heart, those things that burn white hot from within. And maybe that's the problem. Maybe you don't have things that burn white hot. Do you have any passion for anything? What is that passion? What is it that lets you put one foot in front of the other? And maybe you're per- currently living that, and that's great. I don't think I don't think many people are living their passion and their dream. They're merely existing. They're just being. And look, if you want to live your life that way, that's great. I don't understand that. In my mind, I think we all have deep-seated passions and desires within our heart to do more, to be more, to become more than we are now. And I've been very successful in my career. I've been able to write nine books. I'm writing my 10th one now. I've had thousands of podcasts. I've gotten to taste a lot of dreams in my heart. And I still want more and I desire more. I'm I'm continuing to become all the things that I desire and want. That's just the way my brain works. And it's the way I choose to live my life. And it's not even just in my career, other parts of my life. I'm also seeking to become the things I want in relationships across the board. And if you're not that way, I'm real curious, why not? What is it that has you very comfortable with just existing? Existing is not my idea of a fulfilled life. I don't want my headstone on my, uh, at my funeral to say, here lies Jimmy Moore. He merely existed. No. No. I would rather it say... Here lies Jimmy Moore, a man who lived a fulfilled life, living out the passions of his heart unapologetically. That's what I want to see. 
And that's what I want for other people. But so many people are afraid. You don't want to let go of the comfort of the existence. Of just the mere being. Can't do that. And a little bit of this comes with age. That as you get older, you kind of look at your life and go, wait, I'm not going to be here that much longer. And I wasted so much time just existing. And I want more. Do you guys want more? Is that something that gets you going? And if it does, what are you doing about it? What are you doing to strive to become? All right, I've dominated the conversation a lot. Again, day 81 of my stay radical to 50. Definitely want to hear your thoughts on this. Hello, happy Saturday to everyone. It's a beautiful day here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Good morning, Kimmy Culture. Thanks for being here. Hello, Linda. Hello, Jacob. Linda says, so glad you will be continuing with the walk and talk. It makes such a difference. Thank you. I actually had somebody on, uh, where was it? I think it was YouTube. Said, I look forward to these walk and talks. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. I like to just, off the top of my head, just share. I feel like there's so many people pulling you down online. We need people to help lift you up. And if I ever start to pull you down, please slap me because that's not my goal. My goal is to always lift you guys up, offer up things for you to think about and maybe step on your toes a little bit, but it's, uh, it's to help you in the long run, I promise you. Go, Jimmy, go. What do you got today? Cow emoji, steak emoji, another cow, and then the cowboy. <laughs> ah, I see what you're doing, cowboys. That's, that's funny. I love that. Too bad they don't have the cowboy star as, as an emoji. I would definitely use that a lot <laughs> as a Cowboys fan. Um, Bulletproof says the notion you will make time for it if it's important enough is true. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If it's something that you so deeply desire and crave and value that's the key you have hit the nail on the head here bulletproof coconut if it's valuable to you you will do anything to strive for it and i can tell you i've been there from a career standpoint i've been there when i gave up that cozy comfy nine to five job over 15 years ago that happened now. And I walked away from the comfort of mundaneness. That's how I'm going to put it. It was the comfort of mundaneness. The job I was in, very mundane, very low pay for what I thought I brought to the table. But it was secure. And it was steady. But it was steady penance. And I wanted more than penance in my life. And I think most of us do. I don't think most of us want to stay mired in the muckety-muck of mediocrity. Some people do. Some people, that they're very happy with being very mediocre and mundane in their life. Not me. And I would argue not most of you. If you follow my work, I'm challenging you so often. If you were a mundane person, you'd be like, this guy's too over the top for me. And I only share these things because I've lived them. I've been through them. I know from whence I speak. And people are always looking, what's the secret to success? How do I go and grab a taste of that? And I always come back. You got to follow your passions. In fact, when I'm interviewing people, they're like, what are you going to ask me about? I said, I don't know, but tell me what you're most passionate about. Because when you talk about the things you're passionate about, you don't shut up. And it's so passionate, it just flows and flows and flows. And so I love asking that question of potential interview guests. 
and then we have solid content because of that. And so, get on the passions of your heart, you guys. It will change your life when you stop just being and existing and you start becoming and going after those things you want in your life. Watch how your life changes. It's incredible. By the way, I have passed by that car a few times now on Saturdays. I guess he's home from work. He's in his car. He's jamming the music. And I can smell the marijuana. (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) He ain't fooling nobody. (sighs) Whatever you got to do, I guess. Maybe that's the passion of his heart. (laughs) Maybe he's becoming one. Not maybe. He's striving to become high right now. So... (laughs) That's funny. I used to just exist, says Kira, also known as just wanting to die. Oh, and Kira brings up a good point because Kira was very sick and in a bad place with her health not that long ago, a few years back. She found carnivore and it helped turn herself around. Now she's into jujitsu and all that stuff. And yeah, existing... It really is. You're just kind of saying, okay, I'm going to die. And I'm okay with that. Look, we're all going to die someday. But my goal is to go right to that very last day, living life to the fullest, being all the things that I dream in my heart to be. So that when I die, I can say in my, in my spirit state, wow. Wow. That was awesome. That was cool. That was the life I wanted to live. And I did it on my terms. I did it my way. We all want that, right? Someday you want to look back on your life and say, I'm glad I did. Instead of, I'm really upset that I, that I didn't. And I think a lot of people get to the end of their life with lots and lots of I wish I hads. I wish I had instead of I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did is what I want to scream from the top of my lungs as my final breath gets taken away in about 80 years from now. Okay, nobody wants to see 130 year old Jimmy Moore. Yeah, welcome back to the Walk and Talk. Day number 5,434. Yeah, we're not doing that. (laughs) (sighs) Hello, hello, everyone. Thanks for being here. So, yes, day 81 of my stay baddical to 50. (sighs) Still chugging along in this 100 days. I'm out here on my morning walk. I I do these walks. And I talk to you guys here on Instagram. A lot of you watch it on replay on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Look up the hashtag StayBadical to 50. You'll find it there. And, of course, it's on my website, livinglavidalowcarb.com slash StayBadical. So I'm bringing up a topic today. Still want to hear what you have to say. If you have any thoughts on this. Don't just exist. Don't just go through the motions of life. Don't just be. I want you to be... Come and strive for better. Strive for more. Go after the hopes of your heart. And, okay, let me stop here. Some people will say, well, Jimmy, I have. I've been striving. I have been putting in the sweat equity, the hard work, and everything to go after the dreams of my heart, and they still haven't happened. I get that. I get that. There are a lot of people who... They do try, but then they don't see the results they want. So if you're in that situation, let me talk to you for a minute. Could it be that the thing you're striving for is a little too big? Now, don't get me wrong. I think you aim high and you hit pretty close to it, then you're still doing good. But you aim way too high for something that you want. And if you aim high... 
but don't quite get to what you want, did you fail? I would argue no. Are you able to grow in the process of whatever it is you're pursuing? Grow as a person, even learn things along the way? You got benefit out of it. Maybe you haven't, quote, arrived and had the traditional success yet, but don't discount the lesson you're learning in the process of all that. And so, just existing would have you never even try. The fact that you even have tried, and while no, you haven't experienced the level of success that you would hope for yet, you are learning, you are building, you're building experience. Go back to the radio gigs I talked about earlier. So I worked at two different Christian radio stations in the 90s, uh, WODC in Virginia Beach. <clears throat> and then I, wor- I uh, worked at a, that was a contemporary Christian music station. That was Amy Grant. Now here's Michael W. Smith and play the music. I worked at another one that was more traditional preaching and push a button and and then when it's uh, the music time, it was like really drab, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. And it's like, ugh. So I couldn't use my chipper voice on there. I had to learn to tone my voice down. WPMH AM 1010, Portsmouth, Suffolk, Norfolk. I hated that job because it was so boring. It was so menial, but it taught me patience. It taught me patience in pursuit of the becoming I wanted to be. It gave me experience. It was so mundane, but it was mundane with a purpose that eventually would let me use those skills and learn what not to do. I learned from that one. This voice here is not Jimmy. The other one was at WODC. I actually got to host a countdown show of the top 10 songs in Christian music that I call Christian Hits Countdown. And I got to be all my personality. And I loved it. Friday nights. From 10 to 11, would do that show and love it. Taught me a lot about on-air etiquette, vocalization, and it helped me become exactly what I wanted to be someday. And everybody that likes my podcasts now, you got to thank that Christian radio station in Virginia Beach for starting that fire And even when I was growing up, I told my mama this story the other day. She didn't even know this. When I was growing up, we'd come home from church about 1230. And we'd get home and I would run to the radio. Yes, this was the 80s. The radio still was a thing. (laughs) And I would turn on the pop music station. Casey Kasem's Top 40 was on. Those of you of a certain age, you remember that. And I would sit there and listen for hours to all the songs. But more than anything, I would listen to Casey Kasem, how he connected with the audience, used his voice to reach through the radio waves and talk to people. And I knew even then as a little boy, one day I wanted to do that. And now I get to do that. I'm doing it right now with you guys. It's pretty cool. When you become and you strive for those things that you want in your heart. It's what I'm doing. And it's what I'm trying to encourage you guys to do. Stop sitting on the sidelines. Wondering what if. And why. Why are others getting to fulfill the dreams of their heart. And you're not. If you get nothing else out of this walk and talk today. Be willing to take that step of faith out of the mundaneness of existing and into striving to become. Do it, guys. And even if it doesn't succeed 
or if it doesn't succeed right away, the fact that you took that step takes such courage. And you're going to learn things about yourself regardless of what happens. And who knows? Maybe that thing you've always wanted, you actually get. Can't guarantee that, but it's definitely not going to happen if you merely exist. Many people don't chase after anything, says Bulletproof. You're right. Those are the people I do not understand. How do you go through your life and never have anything that lights a fire within you? How? Do you think your purpose in this world is just breathing and existing and taking up space and being a good little nine to five worker? Maybe there are some people who like that life. And at the end of your life, you kind of go, okay, well, that wasn't much. I can't live my life that way. I will always pursue things that are dreams of my heart. And sometimes I pursue things that are a little out of my league and that's cool. Doesn't stop me from trying. If you shoot for the stars, you're gonna get really high. Whether you hit the stars or not, if you shoot for them, you're gonna go higher than most people. So you gotta shoot for the stars sometimes. Go after things that are seemingly impossible with the knowledge ahead of time that the likelihood of you hitting it is not very high. But along the way, you might run into other things that you go, oh wow, because I shot so high, look what I got to experience in my life. I've had that many times as well. All right, busy intersection, gonna take a peek here. All right, I think they're gonna slow down. I'm gonna stop talking until I'm across. They don't like pedestrians, apparently. Are you in my head today, says my friend Kim. Kim, you're one of my inspirations, my dear. Kim has been at it. She's shifting into success. Uh, Kim has been at this trying to become and striving for it, and she sincerely has been for a really long time, many years. And she does wonderful work. Go follow her, Shifting Into Success on Instagram. And constantly pursuing new angles. She's got a really good concept that we recently talked about that I'm excited for her to share very soon. So pay attention to her. But you're, you are one of the people that inspired today's topic, Kim. Because I think you're right on the cusp of seeing that becoming that you've always wanted. And the great thing about you, Kim, is you are proof that when it doesn't come right away, you don't just quit, you shift. You move into another area, you try new things, but you don't give up. And I know you well enough, you wouldn't give up. That's not in your DNA. So you are living proof of what I'm talking about here today. You don't merely want to exist. You want to thrive in that success of becoming. And I think you're gonna. You got all the elements to make it happen. Kira says, even in meditation, we do more than just exist. Yes. Yes, yes. Which is why you need to have those practices in your life. Always, always. Angie says, I've had so much success, both in body composition change, less inflammation and pain. This last year has been a journey of cultivating a positive mental attitude. I love it. And you're bringing up a point that I'm glad you did. When you become because you strived for it and you didn't want to exist anymore, when you become and you taste the gloriousness of success, guess what happens? It makes you strive 
to become even more and even better. And that's great. You feel better. You look better. You got all the health markers that are showing in a better physical state. And now you're striving for mental health success. And look, you're doing it. You've already had proof of concept in your own life that it's going to happen. And that's lovely. I love it. And again, when you've had success, it makes you want more. I've been very successful as a book author, but I don't feel like I've seen my best work yet. I have more in me. I'm shifting it from diet and health books into some mindset stuff. Now, I'm not done with diet and health. Still going to talk about that. But in my next book that I'm writing with Brittany, the One Step Deeper journal coming out first quarter of next year, uh, it's the first mindset book. And of course, you guys get a little bit of a sneak peek of how my mind works in mindset with all these walk and talks. But it's one of those risks that I'm willing to take. I want to become that in my life and I'm striving for it I feel like I have a lot to say and can help a lot of people which is why I'm doing it I feel the grief of my eldest daughter's suicide two years ago it's the other side of love it won't let me stop living Angie I'm sorry to hear that life can be hard and uh, losing your own your oldest child that can't be easy so kudos to you living for her she didn't want to live for herself but you're a living and breathing example of you can't let that go and you can't let it bring you down and and I'm proud of you because that devastates most people and I know you you feel the pain of that every day but It sounds like you're handling it well, so kudos to you. Bulletproof says it's important to look at situations as lessons that you can learn to approach your goals. I've said this many times on these walk-in talks. There is no such thing as failure when you are in pursuit of a goal. Failure is just stepping stones to your future success. Failure just means you haven't found the right opportunity yet. So if fear of failure is what keeps you in the mundane of existing and that you don't actually want to become because what if this, what if that? Those things hardly ever happen, guys. You play the what if game, you can what if yourself into paralysis into never taking any action and I would argue you can what if yourself into never living your life don't do that life has too much opportunity and it's for everyone I don't care who you are I don't care how old you are what race you are nothing Nothing can prevent you from becoming whatever it is that you want to become. We got to put aside this notion that there are limitations that prevent us from being and becoming what it is we want to be and become in our lives. I don't buy into this. Certain people are held back. No, the only thing that holds you back is you. You and your desire or lack of desire to go after the things you want. It's a tired statement that people play the victim and, oh, I can never because. And the because is just a lame-ass excuse. If you want something, you go after it. Doesn't mean you're going to get it, but it means if you want it, you will pour yourself into it And you will do what you have to do to make it happen. And then if it happens, man, man, that is the greatest feeling. When you pursue something 
with all your heart and you truly go after it and then you get it. Nothing replaces that, you guys. Absolutely nothing. So day 81 is very noisy out here today. So many cars out here. Day 81 of my stay sabbatical to 50. Thanks so much for joining today. Uh, Kimmy Culture, thanks for buying a badge. And as always, guys, if you like what I share here, hit that little badge thing down there. It lets you support my work. And I'm very grateful for all the support you guys give me. So thank you for that. Uh, bulletproof coconut. Victim mentality is an excuse not to work hard. People are most addicted to their problems, as Tony Robbins says. Yeah. And look, I think any of us can come up with excuses for why we can't. I always had a phrase when I was a kid, can't never could. So when you tell someone they can't, or they tell themselves they can't, you never will. And that's all within your reach. If someone tells you you can't because of some arbitrary reason, you can't do something, come on, double down. Prove them wrong by going after the thing they say you can't do. Anybody with an ability, a passion, a hunger and desire, you can almost go after anything you want. Especially here in America. Last time I checked, we are still the land of the brave and the home of the free. Free to do what you got to do to get what you want. Go after it, guys. So, I'm all out of time because you guys stopped talking to me. So, I'm going to sign off of here for now. Again, as always, if you missed any of my past episodes, live in lavidalowcarb.com slash stay badical on my website or look up the hashtag stay badical to 50 all over social media facebook instagram youtube you'll find all the videos there i appreciate you watching as always kira says what if people don't know how to dream or set their goals what do you tell them i don't understand that kira how do you dream and set goals What is it that has fire in your belly? That would be the first question I would ask. What is it that makes you excited in life? And look, sometimes people dismiss things because they're like, well, I could never. And they're convincing themselves they could never. Doesn't mean they could never, they're just telling themselves they could never. So if you had a hope and dream for something, but then you never go after it, you never vocalize it, it's not gonna happen. Like people come to me and they're like, oh, I wish I could write a book. I'm like, so write a book. Oh, but I I don't know how. I'm like, do you know how to write? Yes, start writing. I did this recently with Brett Lloyd. You guys know him as Thankful Carnivore. We were at one of the carnivore meetups that I went to. And I think it was in Jacksonville, Florida. And he came up to me, said, man, I love you, write all those books. He said, I wish I could do that. And I said to him, point blank, why don't you? He said, well, I don't, I don't know how to do that. I said, just start writing your story. Just start writing. What do you mean you don't know how? And I was like, do you know what you want to say? Oh yeah, I got a lot to say. Why aren't you writing your book? Do you know he went home? And he wrote about four chapters in that book. (laughs) And I've been giving him pointers about creating an outline and a flow to the book. But he started it. And he just needed somebody to to tell him to go become. Strive to become that thing you want. And look look at what would have happened had I not told him that. And I hope he does finish it, by the way. But... Look at what would have happened. Well, that would be something nice someday. And then someday never comes. And look at all the people that would have missed out on hearing his story. 
And I have a feeling so many people leave things on the table that they want to do in their lives that not only would help them, but help the world. Stop holding yourself back. Stop just being and existing. Go after those things that you want. I talk to people all the time and give business advice for things that they want. And the number one thing I hear from almost all of them is, I'm not capable of the things I want to do. And I tell people, I wasn't either. When I first started online with what I do now, I didn't know how to blog. I knew how to write. And so I started writing. I didn't know how to podcast. I'd never interviewed anybody before. I didn't know how to do those things, but I knew how to talk and talk behind a microphone. And I'd never done anything about going on camera and talking to the camera. Never did that before. But I decided to just start a YouTube channel and start doing videos even before my podcast. Just did it. And then the books came along. I don't know how to write a book. I know how to write and I know how to assimilate my thoughts and I have lots to say. So I started writing books and now I'm writing on my 10th one. So all those things that you hold yourself back on because you don't think you have the ability, you have the capability within you. And a capability is an ability. So we need to let go of this notion that you can't, that you don't have the skill, you don't have the experience. J.K. Rowling did not have experience writing books until she started writing the Harry Potter series. Got it? LeBron James, before he picked up a basketball, did not have the experience to know how to shoot a basketball. So capability is an ability. And we all have a capability within ourselves to literally be and do whatever we want. So it's your job today. It's your mission, if you choose to accept it, to not just exist anymore, but to go and strive to become what you want to become. And on that note, you guys, I'm going to bid a farewell to you guys. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. And I'll be back again real soon with another walk and talk. And we'll see you then. Bye, guys.